Hi, welcome to another video in our short term trading series. I'm Elvin from Dr. Wealth and today we have our guest which is Marcus from SockGen. So today's topic is going to be on the US indices okay, because US is uh, one of the most traded market in the world. It has a lot of securities, it has a lot of liquidity and whether where you are, most likely people who trade will definitely look at US markets. And the US market, I know that one of the more popular instruments for investors mm. is the S&P 500 index. Yeah. And it's done pretty well uh, for those long-term investors. In the past 10 years, it has delivered more than 10% returns. But of course, there are also traders who trade these indices short-term because they can have quite good volatility and yes. the traders may gain enough uh, returns within a short span of time. That's the reason why they are the top yeah, exactly, market. You know, right? more it's more easy to get in out because of the liquidity. Yes. And uh, there are three major indices like Dow Jones Index, S&P 500, as well as the NASDAQ 100. Yeah. So these are likely the more popular ones. And I do know that there are some sophisticated traders who will use futures and options yeah. to trade these indices. But I think for majority of the investors, uh, they may not have a derivative of account yeah. or even understand how these futures and options work. Yeah. And they may still trade using leverage or inverse ETF, right? They can even go short with those inverse ETFs. Yeah. So I did a little bit of research. I found that this TQQQ, which is a long version of the NASDAQ 100, yeah. it has uh, more than $13 billion uh, fund size. Uh, and that, to me, looks quite big. So Marcus, why do you think that this leverage and inverse ETF has grown to such size? Well, I think in the, in the US, um, with the hump, volatility that we've seen in the past uh, year. I think the US indices, yeah. broad, broadly all of them, have been on somewhat of a downtrend. Mm. Right? So I think the one of the key reasons is I think investors wanted to go short. Yeah. Right? They wanted to find an instrument that they can allow them to benefit mm. uh, or to profit from a downtrend in the US market. And, and this leverage and inverse ETFs comes in handy. I would say it's much simpler. Mm. Um, you can see that you, know, you can get that three times leverage on the daily performance of the underlying index. And I think that's quite quite uh, linear for them to understand where their payoff can be if under, if the underlying index moves a certain way. So, ability to go short is one of the reasons. I guess the other reason is probably um, the a bit more simpler in terms of understand in terms of understanding its payoff as compared to more um, option type products or you know uh, margin type products. So that is one thing, and of course, um, I would say leverage. Right, uh, traders when they are trading in the short term. Um, so leverage is very definitely a very key aspect yeah. of, of why this kind of leverage and inverse ETFs yeah. could have grown uh, to such a size. Yeah. So Marcus, I understand that there are DLCs that tracks the US indices as well. Yeah. So what are some of the similarities and differences between the leverage and inverse ETFs with these DLCs? How do they compare? So the leverage and inverse ETFs and DLCs have exactly the same kind of payoff. Mm. So uh, the DLCs give you that five times or seven times leverage on the daily performance of the underlying index or underlying stock, right? So that's exactly the same as how mm. the leverage and inverse ETFs operate. Mm. They give you that uh, fixed leverage factor times by the daily performance of the okay. underlying asset. Okay. So they have exactly the same kind of payoff. Uh, but the key difference is that they have a different structure, right? One leverage inverse ETFs is an ETF structure. So it's a fund structure. Well, for the certificates, for the DLC, it's a certificate structure. And that's also one of the reasons why the DLCs can go more than three times leverage. Okay. Uh, under a fund structure, there are some limitations based on the uh, sort of regulations. Okay. Where you can't go above like two times or three times depending on the, the jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. But for certificates, uh, you are able to go above that. There is no um, hard cap. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have five times or seven times leverage. Uh, for the uh, DLCs on the US index. So they can potentially boost the uh, traders' returns. Yeah. And of course, losses as well. They are wrong. Of course. Okay. Of course. So for both directions, uh, you know, your, loss, your gains as well as your losses are magnified. Um, so when you're trading leverage instruments like an ETF or whether it's a DLC, yeah. uh, you have to exercise your proper trading discipline, yeah. your position risk sizing, management. risk management, yeah. uh, just to be careful on that. Yeah. So you mentioned there are Dow Jones, S&P, as well as NASDAQ, right? So which are the ones that have been more popular? Well, I think the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ uh, 100 index DLCs have been, uh, would say, more popular in terms of more actively traded uh, in terms of turnover than the Dow Jones index. Okay. 
Okay. I think uh, it's a function of volatility probably. Yeah, um, yeah. The S&P and NASDAQ are much more volatile. Especially than NASDAQ 100. <laughs> yeah, correct. So, so I think that has probably fueled, um, I mean for traders, short-term traders who are usually on the DLCs, mm. they like that kind of amplitude, that kind of volatility. And my understanding is that these DLCs, although they are tracking the US indices, they are listed on the SGX, which means that they will follow the SGX trading outlet. So yeah. how does this time difference work out? Correct. So that's, a, that's a one of the novelty of the DLCs, um, or unique feature you can call it. Um, so it's a double-edged sword there. Um, so these DLCs are listed and traded on SGX securities market. Alright, so it has to be within the confines of SGX market hours yeah. where they can be traded between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Singapore time. So that's during Asian hours per se, mm. right? So these DLCs, US index DLCs can only be traded during Asian hours. Uh, and during Asian hours, it will closely track the e-mini futures of the respective oh. underlying index. Okay. All so right? that's like the the derivative contract that they are tracking. The yes. Are tracking. So it gives you that five times or seven times leverage. Okay. Um, that, that is closely related to the imminent futures. But on a close-to-close -close basis, on a US market close-to-close -close basis, the five times or seven times DLCs will continue to track the cash index. Oh. Right? So during Asian hours, you'll track the imminent futures, etc. And then come 9 p.m. at Singapore time when the US yes. market is open, it will still track the cash market index oh. performance with that five times or seven times leverage. Yes. But yeah. of course, you can't trade it. Yeah. All right? So and then the next day, you know, when it opens up at Singapore time, uh, it will, the price will be reflected such that it takes into account the overnight performance of the underlying index. Okay. And then they will start to track the e-minis again? Yes. Okay. Yes. And for traders uh, trading this kind of uh, DLCs on SGX, are there any watch areas? Should they like hold this position overnight or should they mm. close the position since that the things can happen uh, when the US market opens? Well, I think that uh, when, for these traders who, who want to trade the US index DLCs, perhaps they are not really intraday traders, right? Because you can only trade during SGX market hours, 9am yeah, yeah. to 5pm, right? And the e-mini futures during the Asian hours, um, although they are not as not very volatile, yeah. as, volatile as the, you know, during when the cash market is yeah. open, uh, but there is still a bit of volatility mm -hmm. there. Uh, but for you as a day trader, you might not want to, you know, trade it, uh, the DLCs because of not much volatility during Asian hours mm. sometimes on a usual day. But for those who are looking for a convenient instrument to trade the US instrument and uh, here on SGX, yeah, so it's traded in SGD, Singapore dollars, mm. uh, and they do not want to go into a foreign exchange, they're not comfortable with that, they're very comfortable in their SGX uh, sort of yeah. ecosystem. But they want to gain exposure to the US market. So it's more for traders who have a directional view over the next few days or weeks, right? Yeah. Because intraday, they may not have enough movements because the US market Correct. is closed. Correct. So, um, and they don't want to wake up in the middle of the night yeah. to trade the US market. Right. So, so that can be a very good instrument for them to open and close yes. during Asian hours. Yes. So I think it's also for those people who uh, maybe a bit more uh, you know, for those people who are a bit more kanchong and they want to get in ahead of uh, the US market open, right? There could Before be some FOMC meeting. Yeah, it could be a high impact news during Asian hours where, you know, uh, maybe China, US, the middle of China, US tensions lately. Uh, maybe there's high impact news during Asian hours which cause a bit of move in the underlying uh, index or the, the e mini futures on the US index. Uh, so maybe they want to get in ahead of the US market open, even the pre market open, they want to get in ahead at 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. in the morning already because of certain news then they can use this US index DLCs to, to get in your head of that. Okay. Yeah. Some information age because the Americans are sleeping. Possibly, possibly. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, okay. so that, that's one of the uh, sort of uh, benefits of, of considering using the DLCs for the exposure to the US okay. indices. And I've been speaking to quite a number of investors and generally their attitude towards the market yeah. has been more on the bearish side. And um, mm. how, somehow I believe it's because of the more bad economic news or macro news that's out there. Right? Uh, we have seen the inflation rate, the latest one is still at 4.9%. It's very far from the Fed's 2% mm. target. Even though the Fed is pausing the rates, but now we are talking about potential recession that may be coming. Yeah. And the US debt ceiling is still in a lot of negotiation. It's not Lots of heavy in there. Yeah. yeah, so it seems like people are weighed down by this. Yeah, in, uh, in addition to all the geopolitical tension that's out there. So um, the funny thing is that when I look at the S&P 500, year-to-date is up 8%. Mm -hmm. 
and the Nasdaq 100 is up 23%, which is quite fantastic in just four and a half months with so much bearish news that's yeah. out there. Yeah. So um, I'm just curious, right? What are some of the DLC that are more popular in terms of direction? Whether is it long or short? Um, how are people placing their trades with these DLCs? I think last year was quite a bearish market for the US indices. Uh, right from the get-go, we saw lots of uh, investors piling into the uh, short DLCs, especially the five times and seven times leverage. I mean, which, which yeah, was a good time. Correct. Right? So it's a looking back. It was a timely launch because we gave investors in Singapore an uh, instrument that they can short yeah, the US index easily. and also with um, that five times or seven times leverage. Um, so they did uh, jump on the back wagon quite fast. Uh, especially on the short DLCs um, and I think hopefully they made a good return on that over the months um, but of course uh, again uh, with this kind of leverage and, and such leverage and inverse kind of products you should not be holding the instrument for too long um, so it's only meant for short term trading but we need to define what is too long yeah. too long I would say do not hold it for a few months okay. All right. do not hold it for days and weeks are fine yeah days and weeks is fine but do not hold it for a few months okay. So, so that's, uh, that's generally my recommendation on, on holding such leverage and inverse products. Whether it's like the LNI ETFs or whether it's the DLCs, um, best is not to hold it for months. Okay. Yep. So, so uh, I think we did see quite a bit of uh, short, uh, I mean, activity on the short DLCs. Uh, and then as of uh, yesterday when I checked, I think there was still a good 80% on the S&P 500 short DLCs okay. versus the long, which is about 10 per, uh, 20%. Hmm. Um, so that's a similar trend as so well. It's, it's for true the Nasdaq. that they are still more bearish. Yeah, for both the Nasdaq and S and P, okay. uh, we did see about eighty twenty rough kind of gauge on the uh, eighty short on the short DLCs and twenty on the long DLCs in terms of the outstanding positions. Mm. Uh, so investors can can look at this long short ratio on our website, uh, our DLC website. So you can find out more information there to see for the other range of uh, you know um, DBS underlines or ten cent underlines. What is the long short ratio? I mean, it's not. A, a, a true big job okay everyone is very bearish on, yeah, on, yeah. on, on, on Nasdaq or S&P 500 but it just gives a bit of sense yeah. of you know what I mean, are, it's the measurement of the sentiment yeah what are the sentiment what are investors holding on to or what are investors trading uh, so that just gives you a bit of like a benchmark mm. alright so you might have a very bullish view uh, and then you know with this kind of view you might you know maybe calibrate a bit okay right yeah, but for me, it's more like it's sort of like confirm my observation that yeah. people are generally more bearish than bullish. So even in this like a rebound that we've seen yeah. in the last like couple of months, yeah. uh, where you know I think Nasdaq is up. You mentioned Nasdaq, Nasdaq is up by yeah, 22, 23 percent this year. That is quite uh, insane. That's uh, not leverage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really rich. That's not five leverage. Times, five times is hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so I think even in this kind of rebound that we've seen in the market, uh, we do still see investors holding or strong. Or onto the uh, the short DLCs, or maybe there's new investors who come in and trying to you know time the market, trying to catch the top. Uh, but generally, I think that uh, the it's not uh, there's still a bit of like a bearish sentiment yeah. there, especially on the on the investors trading the DLCs, uh, given that they have been uh, you know still sticking to their the majority are still sticking to the shorts. Definitely, it's interesting because uh, this DLC does allow investors to trade the US mm. index in a very different hour. Right? Yes. There are benefits and of course there are certain risks that investors and traders should look out for as yeah. well. Um, as for this kind of DLC derivative product, it's always good to learn more mm. about the product characteristics, yep. how they move. Um, and SockGen has definitely prepared a lot of uh, training materials on their website so you can check it out and to learn more about these DLCs. Yeah, correct. So the US index DLCs, um, I think for actually for all DLCs, um, it, there is a very important feature on these DLCs. Uh, you give that five times or seven times leverage on the underlying index on a close to close basis. Uh, but the key word is close to close basis. All right. So every day you get that five times or seven times leverage. But over time, if you can hold it for more than a day or a few days or a few weeks, there is the compounding effect feature of the DLCs that investors should know. Especially also this is a, also the same kind of feature that will be that is evident mm. in the leverage and inverse ETFs uh, that we discussed earlier. This compounding effect will or change can work for you or against you. Uh, if you not, capture a nice trending market, you can get more than that five times or seven times leverage because of the compounding effect where your gains as well as the losses are locked in every day. Mm. So you, you get that compounding gains if you are you capture a nice trending market. But compounding effect might not work so well for you if you are in a sideways moving market. Yeah. 
right? If it's up one day up, one day down, one day up, one day down, etc. Um, then that can you might get less than that five times or seven times leverage because of the compounding effect, okay. right? So that's that's something that I think investors should definitely uh, understand and read more about, and you can find a lot of illustrations, a lot of different scenarios that we have uh, highlighted in our website under the education tab as well. So we do have more videos on this DLC topic, like the one that we did with Marcus to talk about the Hong Kong DLC, like Alibaba, Tencent and Meituan. And we'll include the link in the description below. And there's another one that I did with Robin where he was using DLCs to trade the Singapore bank stocks. Mm -hmm. You should also catch that one. I'll also put the link in the comments below. So thank you for watching and we'll be doing more of such videos in the future. And please like the video, subscribe to our channel so that you will get an alert when we publish the next one. Thank you. And thank you everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye.